Hi guys, welcome to Drum Dog, and today we are talking about setting up double kick pedals. Now the bass drum pedal is actually quite a complicated little bit of equipment and there are more adjustments than you might initially think. Now we have done another video where we cover all of the main adjustments on a bass drum pedal in single pedal format which you can check out here. Now those adjustments we categorize into three main elements that they change the feel of. Those three elements are velocity, resistance and return. Now I really recommend that you take the time to go and watch that other video as that's going to cover all of those main settings and the changes that makes and today we're just going to be covering the bits that are relevant to a double pedal. So kicking things off, what main feel are we aiming for with a double pedal? Now, I think it's safe to say that 95% of the time when we're playing a double pedal, we are gonna be in a high velocity and maybe fast note rate situation. So that is gonna have an effect on how we wanna set up this pedal so that we're gonna be able to play that bass drum nice and hard and at a decent speed. Now with that in mind, let's reference that back to our three points. So velocity, we're gonna want a high velocity to really punch that kick drum. Resistance, we're gonna want a, a low resistance if possible to help keep it easy and keep our stamina up with our feet and legs. And return, we are gonna want a fast return so that beta comes back to us nice and snappy, ready for the next note. Now how do we achieve that setting? Now starting at our first setting of spring tension, we are going to want to have a balance in our spring tension between enough return to keep it fast, but not so high on the spring tension that we have too much resistance while we're trying to play those pedals. Now I know a classic mistake here can be to actually set our spring tension too low in order to have a really nice low resistance so it feels like it's easy to play at First though, it only is easier for those first few notes because the return is greatly reduced with that low spring tension and without that fast return, it's gonna be a lot harder to keep up any fast passages for any length of time. So it's really important to remember with our spring tension here, we have gotta find that happy balance between a low resistance but a fast return. Now this does take a little bit of experimentation and finding what works for you and even maybe changing out your springs themselves for maybe more heavy duty springs if you find that they're not giving enough return quick enough. Experiment, find out what works with your pedals. Now in terms of beta and footboard height in order to keep that high velocity, we are gonna want maybe a little bit more beta distance away from that bass drum to give us that nice high velocity and to have a wider swing to have a faster return, to really set up that constant momentum. Again, a common mistake with double pedal can be to set up those beaters too close to the bass drum so it feels easier to play, but then with that small swing radius, we're really losing that momentum to keep up the return speed and have those high velocity notes. So in terms of the main settings themselves, that puts us in a ballpark for what we might want to expect from our double pedal. But now here comes in the tricky bit with a double pedal is actually matching those settings from our main pedal over to the slave pedal, which has a few slightly more complicated little nuances. So first things first, when it comes to matching our spring tension, we actually want to go slightly under the spring tension of the main pedal. Now why is that? That's because of our transmission loss in the drive shaft here. Because that kinetic energy that our foot is putting into the pedal has to travel through one universal joint along the shaft through another universal joint before it makes it to the beta, some of that energy is getting lost in there. 
So to allow for that energy loss, if we go for a slightly lower spring tension, and I only mean slightly, maybe two or three turns on that little spindle of adjustment, that helps us keep the same level of resistance in that left pedal so it doesn't feel so much heavier than our main pedal. Now, when it comes to matching our beta and footboard height, it's really important to remember you must have the slave pedal actually attached onto our main pedal during that adjustment. And that is purely for this reason. Without this drive shaft attached, we're not going to have the weight of that footboard pulling the beta forwards. And look what happens if we take that weight away. Now, without that weight, the beta does drop a little bit further back. So without that pedal attached, if I were to match those beta heights to be exactly the same, then once I drop that pedal down, this beta would sit forward of the other one, which you do see so commonly on a lot of double pedals. So it's fairly easy to do. All you've got to do when you're setting that height is set it slightly further back than the main one. So once that footboard weight drops onto it, they line up just at the same level as each other. Now, if your pedal is fancy enough to have an individual footboard height to beta angle setting, that footboard height setting can be slightly more difficult to copy over to that slave pedal. But my recommendation for this one is to straighten out the pedals with the drive shaft at its shortest setting and eyeball along to be able to just see if those footboards are sat at the same height or if the slave one needs adjusting higher or lower. Now, when it comes to what is the correct footboard height, it is purely a personal preference on that. Although I do recommend actually going slightly lower on the footboard to be more within the usable range of our ankles. A surefire way to test if your settings are roughly in the ballpark of each other is with your pedal attached to a bass drum, simply hold both beaters back with your hand, not all the way down to the footboard, but enough to put them under tension, then let go of both beaters at the same time and just eyeball if the beaters move in the same rate as each other for at least the first three or four strokes. If they split apart from each other instantly, then that can show that one has slightly more tension or maybe even more weight in the beater than the other side. This test also clearly shows that transmission loss I mentioned earlier in that drive shaft as the slave pedal almost always kills off on that swing quicker than the main pedal. And finally, our last thought with setting up a double pedal, and that is actually the difficulties of having a slave pedal. Now, what I mean by that is, with our main pedal, it has an entire bass drum in the front of it, which has spurs, which more than likely have spikes in them, and it's fairly rare for that to start sliding around and going anywhere. Whereas our slave pedal, we're still putting the same amount of force from our foot into that pedal, but it's got absolutely nothing in front of it. Now, because of that, we have to be really careful of how we set up our slave pedal in terms of keeping it grounded on our rug, our drive shaft length, and where we're actually putting the pedal itself in our setup. So our first thought is, where are we gonna put this slave pedal? Now, I know the default is to put it in to the right of your hi-hat stand, but that might not actually be the best way as that almost always results in our hi-hat being pushed slightly further out to the left of the kit. And I think, I don't know about you guys, I use my hi-hat a whole lot and I don't necessarily want to be sacrificing my technique to have that extra reach to find that hi-hat. So with that in mind, there's no reason that we can't put this slave pedal the other side of that hi-hat stand to keep our hi-hat in the same position. All we have to do to do this is lengthen our drive shaft on our adjustable ends and just pop that pedal the other side. Now, this might be a bit of a fidget if you have a three leg hi-hat stand, but it is workable. So once we've got our pedal in position, it's time to make sure that it's staying there. Now, almost all slave pedals have these adjustable spikes at the front, and we do wanna make sure that they're biting into the carpet just the right amount. If we bite in too hard, it can start to lift up the pedal and actually reduce the friction of the footboard, which is helping keep it grounded. But if we don't have those spikes out enough, we can end up slipping on that carpet as we don't have that grip at the front. Now on some thicker pile rugs, those spikes, no matter how far out we have them, they just don't seem to grab and they really do slide. 
Now, in that situation, I really recommend trying to turn a cymbal stand tripod so it has a leg just sat in front of that slave pedal so you've got something to butt up against which is going to help it keep still. And finally, a quick tip on setting our drive shaft lengths. Now, if you're not careful, if you adjust your drive shaft length with the slave pedal still in the air, say, okay, I want my pedal roughly there, that feels good, and then lock off that drive shaft, and then we put the pedal down, we can actually end up holding that pedal up in the air and not having it seat fully. So always make sure that your drive shaft length adjustments are loose, we're finding the position for the pedal, fully seating it against the ground, and then finally adjusting the drive shaft up itself so it's already set to the perfect length. Now it really is worth spending the time to experiment with your pedal settings and getting them set up right as it really can be the make or break difference between being able to play that particularly difficult passage and maybe struggling and running out of stamina halfway through. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this setup lesson today and if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you again soon.